Hello and welcome back to the Set Play Gaming Channel. My name is Alad. We're doing the FIFA 14 flashback Road to Glory with Portsmouth. Before I begin today's episode, I'd just like to say if you missed any of the other episodes, you can catch them on a playlist on the right hand side. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. Coming up today's episode, we're going to run through all the results of September 2013. Since I will not be showing everything simply because I'm condensing each episode down to one month, I'll just be sharing the goals. We're going to begin with our Capital One Cup game against Aston Villa. Let's dive into it and see how we get on. Here we are taking on Aston Villa in the Capital One Cup at Fratton Park. And um, Goodison knows that with the underdogs against Aston Villa, they clearly have the better players and uh, thoroughly should show it. Let me check out the goals and highlights. And we make the game um, somewhat interesting with uh, Andy Batcham cutting down the left side after just nine minutes. He swings the ball into the back post and veteran striker David Connolly opens the score and look at this, a peach of a cross begging to be finished and Connolly obliges. Really nice finish. Now the lead would only last six minutes because Aston Villa got back into the game on 15 minutes when Tonev's cross to the back stick was headed in by Andy Wyman to make it 1-1. Really, really nice cross, just stands it up. A bit disappointed with Devera's efforts there. Just out of reach of the cross. And then we'd actually go 2-1 down. Um, six minutes later, Tonev on the left-hand side. Bakunia plays him in, and he's got the legs here to beat Angala. And Tonev gets into the box. And at this point, I'm thinking he's narrowed it down. But unfortunately, the shot goes straight at Sullivan and straight through him. That's so disappointing from Sullivan. All he has to do is stand up and push that away. And uh, he doesn't get strong enough hands on it and gets punished. We didn't give up the fight and um, 35 minutes we were back into the game. Ferry plays in Connolly again and just when you think he took it too wide he slams it into the top corner for his brace. Rolling back the years in his mid-30s David Connolly with a lovely take. Wraps his foot onto the ball and an excellent finish by the striker. We're going to the second half of the score 2-2. Full of confidence and no reason why we couldn't even score a third goal. And we certainly did try. Now Aston Villa would miss a chance um, just uh, 10 minutes before the hour. We gave the ball cheaply away and uh, Bakunia spins. And El Hamadi threw on goal but he actually misses the chance. It goes past the post as Sullivan comes racing off his line. And then on 66 minutes, Villa again started to up the pressure. Andy Wyman on the right hand side. And Gala comes out to meet him, leaving Benteke on his own. But it's a good save from Sullivan. And then finally on 74 minutes, Aston Villa are able to... finally make one of their chances count. Benteke gets uh, tackled but he gets the ball back here into the box and nobody makes a strong enough challenge and he just carries that into the six yard box. It's criminal really that he was able to get so close to the goalkeeper and just dinks it under Sullivan as he comes out. Benteke when he came on caused us all sorts of problems, showed his quality and scores there. Now he'd actually add a second so he'd get his brace on 80, 84 minutes. He was put through on goal and Gala can't get to him. Slid in but misses and then he just places it past Sullivan. We end up losing and crashing out of the Capital One Cup as expected but we did put a brave fight on it. On to the game now against Chesterfield. Here we are back in action in Football League 2. And we're looking to put the disappointment of exit of the Capital One Cup behind us as we take on Chesterfield at the Proact Stadium. Won't be easy though because Chesterfield are going well this season. 
and I thoroughly expected Chesterfield to be in and around the playoff places. And so it proved to be after six minutes. Uh, Dariqua was put through into the box and he slams the ball in for the home side after just six minutes. A lovely pass from O'Shea. He shows good balance and control and he finishes it before Sullivan can react into the corner. After 17 minutes, Dariqua would get his second opportunity. Talbot taking an extra touch here but playing him in and he gets into seven or eight yards out from goal tries to place it this time and uh, maybe the defender just coming in there and Gala maybe probably put him off and it actually proved costly because three minutes later the ball was in the net at the other end Connolly with a lovely pass to Jeb Wallace and Wallace shows Dariqua how it's done lovely placement shot into the corner to equalize for us Goodison up on the touchline, applauding that, lovely finish. And around the half hour mark, Chesterfield would um, almost get themselves back in front. We know how good Doyle is, and uh, here he is, look at this uh, skill, Doyle wriggling his way through the defence and then forcing uh, Sullivan with a parry away and then on 51 minutes uh, Simon Ferry plays through Andy Barcham you'll see here originally he's going to try and round the goalkeeper tries to chip him can't get the ball under control just fails to beat the goalie on this occasion and that would be the full time whistle honours even a share of the spoils and we move on to the next game as we take on Berry in the league. Here we are back at home in front of the Fratton Park faithful and looking to springboard our way into first place as you can see a quick snapshot there at the league table. Three wins, three draws, run defeated and a great chance to go top of the table. And one thing about Berry is as well is they always try and make it difficult it would take 25 minutes to see a genuine scoring chance. Marco Navas hits the side netting for the away side. And a few moments later, Bealey got some space down the right and almost caught Smith off guard on his line. You'll see here he has to tip this over for a corner. Could have dropped in at the far post. In the beginning of the second half, Smith was called into action early again as Harrods cross was punched away. Paul Smith still asleep and Berry recovered the ball and the shot by Soares looked to have gone in but it was agonisingly wide. Now Portsmouth looked to open the scoring on 57 minutes as this cross comes in, Johannes Ertel collects the ball and he drags three men over and then plays it to George Branford. And unfortunately, he squanders a good chance shooting wide. A few minutes later, Ashley Harris, making a nuisance of himself, actually picked the pocket of Luchin and set up Branford again. You'll see here, and he skews his shot wide for a second time. Now Berry kept on coming at us. And Smith was excelling in gold, making a great save to deny Obadei from the free kick. Great agility from the shot stopper. And so a cold, rainy night at Fratton Park ends goalless. A little bit frustrating for Goodison's men being held to a second successive draw on to the next match against Morecambe. There's some highlights now to show you from the game against Morecambe. And we're at the Globe Arena for Football League 2 action. Pretty sure at this point of the season, even though it's early going, that Portsmouth would be favourites to win this game. And... Uh, We'd open the scoring after 11 minutes. Didn't take long. Marcos Painter with the through ball to Andy Barcham. 
And it's a lovely take by Bartram. He really got a lot of power behind that. Neglecting to cross for Connolly or Adjumang. He took the chance himself and didn't he take it well. Really nice finish past Roche. And two minutes later the ball was in the net again. Muti kills long hit and Hope found Adjumang. And then Bartram's through pass enabled Connolly to be one on one. Despite Roche's best efforts Connolly tapped in the rebound. Tried to place it, Roach guessed, but then by saving the first shot, it just fell nicely and Connolly knew not to take a touch there. After two draws, Portsmouth were in the mood for goals and were lucky not to be 3 0 up. When Adjumang was presented with a clear scoring chance, Roach came to Morecambe's rescue once more. Roche could do little to stop Portsmouth third goal. A lovely combination of passes and uh, Connolly showing excellent ball control. Johannes Ertel then finding Batchum on the left who crosses it back to Connolly and a wonderful header from him to make it his brace. One of the better team goals that I've scored this season. And Goodison happy. Lovely connection from Connolly. And a few moments later, there's a penalty at the other end as Williams broke into the box. Joe Devera, the centre back, penalised for the foul on Williams. You can see here as he comes across. Doesn't take the ball, but does take the man. And it would be um, Marshall, all the pressure on him to pull a goal back for the home side. And Marshall saw his penalty saved by Sullivan. And as Portsmouth recovered the ball here, Bartram's attempted back pass was intercepted. And Morecambe took advantage. Dodds is uh, cut back with the header and Marshall makes amends for his penalty miss. And thankfully for the Morecambe home side they did have something to cheer about. Pretty disappointed with that back pass. Now Morecambe in the second half were pressing really high and Bartram's through ball finds Connolly and presented him with a hat-trick chance but he spurned it by shooting wide look at how close that is the score would end 3-1 and Goodison happy to claim three points on to the final game now as we take on South End United in the league here we are Ian Goodison Portsmouth back in front of the home crowd at Fratton Park taking on South End United in the league and so far we are unbeaten. Let's hope we can continue that run of form that has seen us at the top of the table. And the opening six minutes, Simon Ferry squanders a chance. Tries to do the right thing in steadying himself before shooting. And then a few moments later, Ferry turned to provider as he played in Jed Wallace. You'll see the ball get worked over here. Connolly brings it down under control into Simon Ferry. And then there's the pass to Wallace. And he makes no mistake and smashes in low to open the scoring for Pompey. Showed a lot of uh, patience there. It's a really nice finish from Jed Wallace. He's capable of doing both finishes, both the foot through the bar and the placement shot. And then just before the 30 minutes, Portsmouth added a second goal. After losing the ball, the high press won it back. And Connolly was able to play in Andy Barcher, who scored into the far corner to double our lead. Well, 
Nice take by Barcham. Into the second half now, and after a neat pass by Wallace from the right side, he actually played in Ashley Harris, who's one on one with the goalkeeper. Unlucky not to score, this little dink over Smith goes wide. Lovely little toe poke over the goalkeeper. And South then tried to get back into it after the hour. And it was Straker at the back post. Players in the box screaming for the cutback, but he ignored them and hit the side netting. And Sullivan had to be at his best five minutes from time to deny core at the back post. And Portsmouth would then add the final nail to the coffin. And this would be on 90 minutes. You can see the ball get worked down this left hand side. And Ricky Holmes with a surging run. As he cuts into the central midfield, he plays in Patrick Adjimang, who lashes us into a 3-0 lead to finish off the visitors. An emphatic finish by the Ghanaian striker. So with that wrapped up, that completes all the games from September. We're now going to take a look at the league standings. So take a look at the standings, we are undefeated after 9 league games, an incredible start for Goodison's men, even if we don't maintain our start you can see we're strong enough to at least be in the playoff picture. Can you let me know whether you think we can stay in these top 6 spots, just let me know in the comments how you think we're going to go this year, and obviously we made a good start so we want to try and maintain that and possibly go for the title. Now, uh, Oxford are the only un other unbeaten side in League 2. Accrington are second, Oxford third. Newport, Hartlepool, Chesterfield and Scunthorpe all in the playoff picture. York City and Burton Albion prop up the table. Alright, that's it for today's episode. I hope you did enjoy the goals and the summary. I'll be back soon for more Portsmouth Road to Glory. And uh, if you guys are enjoying this, why not consider subscribing to the channel and continue to support me. This is our lad for Set Play Gaming. I'll see you guys soon.